Pete here for Studio Live today, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be unboxing my brand new Steinberg UR44 interface. Let's go. Now, first of all, a disclaimer. I'm a big believer that you don't need much gear at all or definitely don't need the highest end gear to make great music and whilst the Steinberg UR44 is a middle of the range interface in terms of price and features you can really get by with anything in fact um, I'm a big advocate of this one which is the Steinberg UR12 and I use this and will continue to use this for my mobile recording I also have a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 which is actually what is being replaced Sorry, it's a great unit and uh, I'll probably still use it in some applications, but for my main recording interface, I wanted something that had some additional inputs, mainly so that I could record a stereo signal as well as a microphone or two. So that's why I've grabbed the Steinberg UR44. So here is the packaging question and it's uh, nearly three kilos worth. So it's a solid unit here and let's cut this sucker open and take a look. Logs. Under the bubble wrap here is our interface, so let's chop into that. There we go. I try to keep the bubble wrap in one piece. And here it is in all its boxed glory. So the UR44, so it's a 6x4 USB 2.0 audio interface, and it's got 192 kilohertz support, uh, and it's got this DSP Mix FX, which I'm very keen to have a play with, which is uh, sort of some latency-free effects that you can record and mix through, which uh, I'll be playing around with once I get used to this new device. So let's now open the box and take a look inside. Okay, in the box here we have a user manual and a CD. You've actually got tools for UR44, so it's quite rare to actually get a CD. Normally you've got a a pamphlet in there that says go to this website and download the software. We have the AC, the power adapter. So this unit actually does run on its own separate power. In fact, I'm going to have to find an additional plug here in my studio setup because my current interface uses the USB directly from the PC to power as well as connect. We have a USB A to B cable in here, not surprisingly that we need that. And then under all of this styrofoam, and again protected by this anti-static paper, is the device. Let's uh, grab it. Oh, I love the sound of polystyrene. Not. And here we go. So that is our Steinberg UR44. So, taking a look at this, we've got our four preamps here. So these are a combo, so a TRS as well as an XLR for a preamp. So we can plug in any source with a phono plug or an XLR. So you can record up to four separate microphones with four separate preamp controls on this. So these are the dials for each of those preamps that we can set for independent volume controls. We've got the 48 volt and that goes across all four, but you can see here that there's two settings. So if we wanted to put uh, an instrument in the first two or some sort of line in, in the first two, we can leave the 48 volts off and then just put it on and use inputs three and four for some XLR inputs, uh, condenser microphones. We have two independent headphone outputs with independent volume controls. And this is something that my Scarlett 2i2 doesn't have. So this is gonna be handy for when I'm recording, uh, when I'm monitoring and recording an artist at the same time. So if someone's singing and I'm actually listening in, doing the monitoring and um, tracking the session, then I can give them a separate mix and I can actually set that up as a separate output in my DAW and have their headphone mix as well as mine, which might wanna be different. They might want more of themselves, for instance, in their own mix. And finally, the output at the end here, which is our master output that will go from our 
output at the back for our monitor speakers. On the top here, we have this handy diagram that all of the Steinberg interfaces have so that when you're plugging in at the back, you can actually see what it is that you're aiming for and what sort of cable you're gonna plug in. So let's flip over and take a look at the back. So at the back here from the left, we've got the power button. Turn it on, we've got the power input here for our 12 volts of AC power. So once again, this does require power. It's a decent, it's a big chunky unit and it does need to have its own power supply. So not as portable as something like the UR12 because you do need to have somewhere to plug this in. We've then got the CC mode. So this stands for, I can't remember, something compatibility. And it, with that on, it means that you can use it with any USB device. So if you're using this with an iPad, is my belief, you need to have the CC mode on because the iPad can't run the Steinberg drivers. We've got MIDI in and out, so I don't use a whole lot of MIDI, and the MIDI I do use is a USB MIDI uh, interface that goes directly to my PC, but handy to have, even if I never use it. We've got our main output here, so we've got a left, right main output, and then we've got line outputs. So we've got line outputs one, two, three, and four. So this gives us the flexibility again to have different monitor mixes that we have coming out so we can actually um, put a second set of monitors and have a separate mix that goes to those if we desire. And finally, we've got line inputs number five and six. So this is actually a six input. So we've got the four inputs over the front there and then we can actually have one more stereo input here at the back. So it makes it a pretty flexible uh, mixing device for your inputs, but it means that you also get complete independent control over those. So if you wanted to actually have up to six independent inputs on here, you can go ahead and record those. So that is it for now. It's time for me to plug this in and start having a play. I'm sure you'll be seeing this in future videos once I get up and running and work out how it's going to integrate into my system. And I'm definitely keen to also try this on an iPad or an iPhone for some mobile recording, even though, as I said before, it does need to be plugged in, but especially this is gonna be great for, uh, unfortunately, for my Scarlett 2i2, replacing that one as my main interface here on my PC. Thanks again for watching, hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>